Jeff, Dan Campbell says that losing close or coming up, you know, almost there, it's not good enough. And obviously, I agree 100%. Yeah, Jared's I, the same I, thing. I, I share this. That, that is my absolute, I will never back off mentality. 100%. Not good enough. You lost by one, not good enough. Because if it was good enough, you would have won, right? But I don't want to get into my side of it. I want to get to his side. Mm -hmm. This is a team that's now 12-6 and six against the spread under him, him as a head coach. Now, if you're a betting person, this makes you very happy. But we need to offer some context on that 12-6. and six. They're 12-6 and six against the spread. And in those 18 games, how many times have they been the favorite? Not one. Not one. Not a single one. The Sunday will be their first. But those 18 games you have played under Dan Campbell, you've never been a favorite. Whether you were three and a half point dogs, six and a half, more than a touchdown, two scores. You were always playing with points, technically. So that record is very deceiving. And like Campbell said, coming up close, short, it's not good enough. And eventually they're going to have to win games. And what was the agreed upon expectation from at least us two on this desk going into the year? They had to win more games and show improvement. Yeah. I don't need 11 wins this year. I don't need to be unrealistic with this team where they're at. But what I need is for you to show me that you can coach, that you can make improvements. And I only have one game sample this year. I'm not going to freak the hell out and tell him, you need to fire this guy or he shouldn't be in a job. No, we're not doing that. Absolutely not doing that. But I can look at Jim Schwartz and say three wins to six wins to ten wins. Okay. So I could buy in three wins last year, six or seven wins this year. And then you make a run for the division next year. And again, what's my expectation? I always tell you guys, I've never changed this. By year three, you should be contending or winning your division. You want to save your job? That's how you do it. And if you only want to use a one-game sample size right now from this season, the Vikings look like they're going to be a problem for a few years. They look like they got the right coach. Kirk Cousins has never looked better. Justin Jefferson, wow. So eventually, Detroit, this football team is going to have to get to that point. Not just worrying about everybody else around us getting worse, but this team getting significantly better. And you do that by draft picks, mm -hmm. free agency, which Brad Holmes so far has shown he's very competent in. Especially on the draft pick side, he's fixed your salary cap, so now you're going to have money to spend. Oh, and on top of it, you now need just a little bit of a win total boost, right? Three last year. You give six or seven this year. I can legitimately say, okay, there is, there is at least noticeable progress. Is it to my standard? No, no. But you know what? It is enough that I can give this guy a third year and say, hey, Dan, this is the year. Year three. Contend for the division. And if he falls a game, game and a half short, and the Vikings or whoever wins the division were just that much better. But they're a wild card team. Yeah. Is anybody actually no, upset? Keyword contending. Contending for the division. But there's a difference between, quote, contending for the division and then just finishing in second place. Right? Those are, there's a very big difference yeah. there. Context. So going into, I, I am so far ahead and I totally understand, but please bear with me because I want to get this point across. Mm -hmm. So you go into that fourth year with Dan? Now it's put up or shut up. I mean, at what point is it you have to prove something? Because then you're just Jim Caldwell at that point, right? You you finish second place again. Let's say you go ten and seven. Vikings eleven and six or twelve and five to three years from now. You're just Jim Caldwell, and that you haven't won a playoff game, and that you haven't won a division. Right? You know what? I, you know where I'm getting at with this. Mm -hmm. So. That's why it's a must win against Washington. You got to win the games that you have an opportunity to win. Don't let them go. It's already hard enough to win in the NFL. Shooting yourself in the foot or giving teams extra points or short fields of play is worse. And that onside kick is the equivalent of a turnover. You had the pick six from Goff. The onside kick was basically a turnover. 
Because that's what happens when your quarterback basically starts at the 25-yard line, throws the ball downfield, intercepted. They start at their own 45, fifth midfield, whatever it may be. Short field position, they go down and get you seven. Go win some games. Close enough is not good enough, Jeff. And I love that Dan said this, by the way, because this has kind of been the whole moral victory discussion that Lions fans have been having. And with Dan acknowledging it, I mean, he's self-aware. I mean, he knows even last year when they beat the Arizona Cardinals, they, beat them, they blew them out. Like, that was the first game, I think, in Dan Campbell's tenure where they, the Lions played a complete game. They, they took advantage of an opponent that was coming off a short week. They obliterated the Arizona Cardinals. And I'm not saying you got to do that. But what I am saying is, like you said, you have to win games you're supposed to win. Or at least you have a good chance to win. Like this week against Washington. It's a very winnable game. Like, if you go in and beat Washington, like, not only does that, it, it sells to your players, but Dan Campbell's been preaching this. Like, we can't continue to make these mistakes. And it's not just from a player's perspective. It's coaching, too. Getting in your own way. Like, I think that's been the Lions thing, too, even last year. Those close games. Like, we had this discussion. How many games would the Lions win last year if they just closed some of these games? Or offensively, you scored more points. Like, context does matter, but it's hard. Like, you talk about their record against the spread. If, if they win five games this season or, or they have a rough start, even if you sit here and say, well, they were close in a lot of those games. It just it, puts so much pressure just, on the next season, It too. does. It's a ton of pressure. Like, this is stuff that Dan has to correct now because even with Jim Caldwell, like, you brought him up. I'm glad you did. Because the seasons with Jim Caldwell, you'd start off slow and then you'd pick up towards the end of the season. Like, this has always been, I feel like, a Lions thing. Like, especially with Matthew Stafford, uh, always having to do a fourth quarter comeback, always having to bring this team back. From a Lions fan perspective, I know you, you just want to go in and outplay the team from start to finish. You don't want to have to play catch up in the fourth quarter, uh, clawing, uh, trying to get back in the ball game. And at the very end, you're like, well, we lost by three, or, you know, we lost by a f whatever it is, a touchdown. The Lions have to come out and, and make a statement. And I'm not saying you got to blow out teams, but what, I'm, what, I'm, what I am saying is take care of teams that are, that are beatable. Like Carson Wentz this week in the Washington Commanders, yeah, they're 1-0, but they, they struggled, or they almost lost to the Jacksonville Jaguars. So it's a very winnable game. And I'm glad Dan, and not just Dan, we talk about the team reflecting the, the ideology of your head coach. Amon Ra, Panay, Jared Goff, they all feel the same exact way. Close enough isn't good enough. You got to go out and, and at least be the better team from start to finish. So we'll see. They have a lot of things they have to correct, and that's kind of the, the whole how am I going to base Dan Campbell. Like, I, I like Dan. I think he's the right guy right now. But the most important thing is through this whole 17-game season this year, the big thing I would be looking at is does this – does shooting yourself in the foot or getting in your own way, does that – keep happening from week one to week 17 like that's the thing i'm going to be paying attention to because as long as the lions aren't beating themselves and i'm talking about defensively i know they don't have a lot of talent but still like you said it does fall on coaching so we'll see but i'm glad he's acknowledging it because he's self-aware and i think that's a very it's one of dan campbell's best traits is he's self-aware and he knows like we talk about what we talk about on the show but he knows exactly what the media is talking about like he knows he has to win these games so um i think it'll be just fine but you can't keep shooting yourself in the foot. That, that's the overall message for the Detroit Lions. We'll see how much better they get this week.